somebody who runs our digital part, uh, department put out a tweet saying the Yankees are peaking too early. Then I responded to that by saying, oh, I thought the Yankees were over. The guys that, you know, I and what I was alluding to, if anybody listens to this radio program, which a lot of people do, know that you, me, and Gio have been sparring over whether or not the Yankees season was over or whether or not it was their year. I was saying that you guys were saying that it was over for them. No one said that. You guys were saying that it wasn't their year. It wasn't until the trade deadline. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, whatever. Right on. So, so I responded to that, and somebody at Digital got you know all into a Twitter battle. And, oh, Digital. <laughs> right, exactly. And I, and I did not want to get into a digital battle. So I said, all right, forget it. I'm not listening. I'm not responding to anything. I'm not, I'm not getting involved. So I didn't get involved. Uh, but nonetheless, here you are. You open a show with the Yankees, and rightfully so. I mean, they have been unbelievable. I think a couple things. From my perspective, uh, number one, it, uh, John Carl Stanton is actually a baseball player. Yeah, not just he's, a hitter. No, he's a baseball player. Correct. And and even he alluded to it last night after the game that, guess what? You know, I think it's really helping that I'm playing the outfield. Shocker. And it, it's making me into the total player that I was with the Miami Marlins. Now, whether or not he could stay healthy, that's a whole nother story. Every time he goes running after a ball, I'm, I'm waiting for something to pop. But so far, so good. But he's hitting on top of all of it. That That's the thing. And, you know, I think an athlete should really truly be an athlete and not be put in a bubble wrap uh, and, and sat, on the, on, sat on the bench uh, for, you know, the entire game and asked to hit only four times. I mean, I know the designated hitter is something that's very popular with the fans, and ultimately the National League will adopt it most likely next year. But he needs to play baseball. Agreed. He's an athlete, for God's sake, and he can play baseball. And by the way, Aaron Judge is playing a great center field. He's been wonderful. So when you talk about the trade deadline, adding Gallo to right field, moving Judge to center field, and putting Stanton in left field, that is a monster lineup. By the way, that could be like the starting offensive line for the Jets, for God's sake. Well, and the flexibility, too. Last night, Gallo's in left, Stanton's in right, Judge is in center. Then you take Judge, you move him, you bring Gardner in. You've got Voight on the bench because they're in a National League park. There's nowhere to put him. He pinch hits. That's wonderful. And don't forget about Tyler Wade. So Tyler Wade can play out out in the outfield. Tyler Wade could be a spark plug. Tyler Wade can run the bases. I mean, look, like a few years ago when the Yankees had a bunch of nobodies and acquired a shell to play third base and all these guys, Mike Tauchman and everybody, all of a sudden kept the Yankees relevant. There's a lot of that going on. And Velasquez uh, is one of those guys at shortstop, and he's a local kid. It's a great, you know, they, they were talking about it last night, how you have to root for him. I mean, you have to root for everything that he's done thus far, and he's been relatively flawless until he threw the ball into the ground yesterday, but I thought that Rizzo should have had it. But the other thing that's going on with the Yankees, which is interesting, and I think every coach in every sport wants this type of thing to happen on their team because it brings the best out in the players if you have the right players who have the right mindset. So Rizzo gets traded here, and he gets traded here because Voight can't stay on the field. Mm-hmm. He goes on the IL three different times. It's frustrating. He's you know striking out. He's not getting big hits. And I, I'm not saying that Luke Voigt would ever became complacent, but I just think he had his happy place. He was the first baseman. He was the guy that was going to be there. There was nobody else that was going to push him. And now, all of a sudden, Brian Cashman goes out and gets these left-handed sticks, Gallo and Rizzo, and he brings Rizzo in. And Rizzo's a kid from New Jersey. Rizzo is popular. He's a left-handed stick. We got a short porch. We got a first baseman that can't stay on the field. He is the perfect replacement for Luke Voigt. And I don't wish this on anybody, but maybe the best thing that happened to the Yankees is that Rizzo came down with COVID-19 and was placed on that COVID list for 10 days. Because Luke Voigt then did not have a chance to go down to the minors. He had to come right to the big league team. He had to play first base. And all of a sudden, and this is what I'm talking about internally, all of a sudden, it becomes an internal battle at first base. It becomes about one's pride. And it becomes about, uh, I've done this for the Yankees over the last three years. I've done this. I'm a great player. I can do all these things. I should be doing all these things. I'm fighting for my position. So what does Aaron Boone have? He has internal competition at first base. And that has, I believe that's one of the reasons why Luke Voigt came back as explosive as he did, why he is trying to make a name for himself and try to separate himself. Because while he respects Rizzo, he also probably felt somewhat disrespected. And I'm, and I'm telling you, there's another guy that's going through this right now. Do you know who that guy is? You tell me. Glaber Torres. 
Glaber well, Torres is going through it right now, and they, I'll tell you why. They were talking about this last night on the broadcast. Yes, um, the, the ball. It's this is happening again now at another position. Uh, you know, Glaber was comfortable. He was there. He was the shortstop. You know, he's not having a great offensive year. He's uh, limited uh, defensively. Uh, many people feel he's a liability. The last quest has been unbelievable. He's a local story, and almost I, I'm telling you, like I, I I know this from as as a a former player at a position who got replaced. And, you know, sometimes the replacement comes in and you sit there and you go, there's your replacement, have at it. And then the other time a replacement may come in and, and all of a sudden light up and you're like, sure. oh, crap, I'm going to lose my job. And he and that replacement comes uber popular. So you have a local first baseman and a local shortstop who have become uber popular since they be, since they got here. And that the guys that they have replaced do in large part to injury, uh, all of a sudden now uh, are forgotten. And they're out of here. Forget that they, they were yesterday's news. We got guys now that we can win with. Why would you ever ever change it? Well, it's interesting you bring that up only because O'Neill and Kay were talking about this on the broadcast last night. And it's, you know, Urshela's coming back. He's getting healthy. And Torres is going to be right behind him. And I was, uh, the thinking I had was, wow, you know, I wonder how they're going to work Torres back in. And they were actually taking it from the standpoint of, I wonder if you can keep Velasquez on the roster. Because when the rosters expand September 1st, they only expand by two. It's not the old 40-man roster anymore. Is there even going to be a place for him on the roster, and you're going to have to knock down a pitcher? And so it's interesting. I don't know how the Yankees view him. Maybe they're they're going to throw Torres right back in, and Velasquez will become oh, a, I, I, a bench person. I, I don't know. I, I think that they will turn, uh, turn right back to Torres, because Torres is... Basically, the guy. He is their guy. But at and, least and you know you've got a kid in waiting that can play the position. And they got another kid coming, too. Uh, I forget the, that other kid's name. I was reading about him as well. But for Velasquez, he's making every he's taking every opportunity, making the most of those opportunities, and now will develop another internal competition, if you will, with, an, with another established player. That that's the thing that I'm getting to. This is what you want. You want internal competition. You know the, uh, you know Joe Judge and Robert Salah. They want internal competition. They certainly don't want injuries happening. And, and unfortunately for the Jets on defense, they've lost two starters now. But the the fact is is that when you have guys competing against each other to make the squad to be on the field, that is probably one of the best things that can happen. As opposed to having a definitive guy. And, you know the other thing too is. For the Yankees, I mean, their pitching staff has been ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe a little bit up and down with the, the closer role with Chapman and now Britton on the IL, but uh, Loisica was great again last night. Loisica was outstanding last night. Throwing 100 miles yes. an hour. I mean, it's ridiculous how 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 great he looks. And so it, it, there's a lot to take away from what the Yankees have done over the last 20 days. And since the, the, all, the All-Star break, they have been on fire. And yeah, maybe a lot has to do with Rizzo and Gallo coming over here, but I'm telling you... A ton. Uh, but but Stanton playing left field is a big part of it. Judge in center field is a big part of it. The Velasquez uh, coming over here and taking over for uh, Glaber Torres when he won uh, at the IL. And then, of course, Rizzo getting stricken with COVID-19 to allow Voight to come back in here. And then when you see the lineup and you see the lineup and you watch guys hitting and you watch how Stanton is locked in right now, I mean, this team is as good as anybody in baseball. If they, if Garrett Cole can really ramp it back up to being that and he number has one been, and he ha- I know, but I mean, really, truly, as we get into August and September here, uh, they're going to be a bitch to play against, man. I don't know if they'll catch the Rays. I, I don't know, but uh, they're going to win the wild card, and they're going to be right smack dab in the middle of all this. And they'll have maybe the the scariest lineup of all the teams left in the playoffs. Well, one thing I do believe they'll catch the Rays. Their schedule in September is quite in their favor, playing Baltimore twice. You've got Cleveland in there. You've got Texas. I do. Me and Al played a little over under yeah. uh, in the warm up show between five and six exciting. every day. It was awesome. Actually, yeah. it was really good. And yeah. we looked at the last thirty seven games. You know, and he's for real. He said, you know, ten and a half losses out of thirty seven games. I'm taking the under. I think this team can win twenty seven, twenty eight games, get to hundred wins. And I think if they do that, I think they will pass Tampa. The other thing to what you just said in part was the fact of Stanton playing the field now. And let's be honest, he was forced into the field because of the moves that were made and because of the lineup they have. But what it's given them now is they can use that DH spot as a resting off day while they're still being productive. And he is now in he's got some sort of fluidity in terms of being a ball player again. He's I'm, an athlete. I'm telling you, you're batting Gary Sanchez, you know, sixth 
which and I know he's batted down there before, but all of a sudden you get to him, it's like, look what you've he, gone he's through. He's almost even like an afterthought it's, right yes, now. Yes, he really is. And you don't have Rochelle is not playing, and Gleyber Torres is not playing. But then again, uh, you know, I can't even I can't even impress upon you enough the internal competition and what it does and how it, if you are truly the player that you say you are. That internal competition should bring out the best in you. I thought that would happen with Jeff McNeil and the, and the Mets, uh, you know, when they traded for Javi Baez, because you know, obviously, all all that was made about Javi Baez wanting to play shortstop, unless he went to the Mets, where he would play second base, because of Francisco Lindor. And I'm thinking what that does internally to that locker room. Right. And you're thinking that Jeff McNeil is like, wait a minute, wait, you're, you're trading for a second baseman? I've been your second baseman. I'm supposed to be your guy. Outfield. But he's, but he's had a terrible a terrible offensive season. So you're hoping that he would respond the way that Luke Voigt has responded, but that hasn't been the case. And that's why if Francisco Lindor comes back, now these next 10 games for the Mets, we, we talked about 13 games that included the Giants and the Dodgers. The last three of those 13 are going to be against the Giants now here at City Field. And then come Washington and Miami. These next ten games, they got to be. I- I'm telling you, if they want seven a- games out, if they have any chance, what's I'm just telling you, we knew that they needed to be six and seven in those thirteen games at worst, and they're not going to be that. The best they can be is if they sweep the Giants, which they're not going to do. Uh, they win which, five. They win five as opposed to six. But these next ten games, which include three against the Giants. I think they got to go eight and two. They got to go nine and one if that's even possible. I don't know if they're capable of doing it. And plus, you've got an Atlanta team that is really good and hitting on all Yankees cylinders did them a right favor now. Last night. I understand. And, and watch do, them I mean, come back and win tonight. Who knows? Maybe, maybe the Yankees will do another favor for the Mets. But uh, the, we'll the, see. The, maybe the Mets will get Francisco Lindor back. Maybe they'll have a full maybe, lineup maybe, of maybe. Bobby Baez, and who knows what that does. And maybe they make a run here. But you take a look at their schedule, with the exception of like the last week, which is well, it doesn't matter. Really tough. It doesn't matter. They played the Pirates. They played the Marlins. What they do? Lose, 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 lose. Doesn't matter. As opposed to the Braves, who are not going to crap they're out of all those They're beating the teams, teams they're supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. So it may be too late, but at the end of the day, there's still hope. That's well, all you got to say. There's always hope. And the other thing, too, about the Yankees, real quick, and we'll, trust me, we'll do the Mets in a little while. The one thing about the Yankees, too, you look at that game last night, they didn't do anything, you know, they didn't, you know, uh, beat around the, the Braves pitching. Like, Atlanta, the kid threw well. Yeah. But they are so deep that it's really hard to hold them down for nine innings. You had the one kid imploded in the one inning where you got the the second, I think, was that the base hit by Stanton, the two-run double, I think it was? That's where he hit uh, uh, DJ LeMayu in the back. Yeah, and he, he was yeah. throwing the ball all over the place. He was terrible. But I thought this was the type of game that Atlanta was set to win. They get it when, Sw- when Swanson hits the home run and nothing's happening in Montgomery, as always, as they mentioned a couple of times during the, ca- the telecast. Oh, here we go, another game where you know the Yankees can't give Jordan Montgomery any run support. All of a sudden, there was a little bit of a seam, and they took advantage of an opportunity because they were not in line to win that game last night. Atlanta, I would have thought, with the way the game was going, but boy, I tell you, it is hard to keep that lineup down. And when you're getting production from top to bottom and you don't know where it's coming from, they are going to make a run. And I'm telling you, for a team that looked... If you remember, the conversation going into the trade deadline was, which is still funny when you look at where they're at now, do the Yankees sell? <laughs> no, are, are the Yankees buyers oh, no, because of season. Boston and not, Tampa? It's, well, it's and, not that year. And, and, no, and, wasn't and that true? hold was on, it, was hold it their on, year? hold was on. It their year? I kept hearing it wasn't their year. You wrote, you want to go back and look at the standings at that time? And it was said, G, heard, not just, me. I, well, just all I kept hearing was it was not their and year. And at the time, it wasn't. They weren't playing well. Boston and Tampa had very healthy leads on them, and they weren't a very good team, and they couldn't sweep so, anybody. Well, let me ask you and they question. had horrendous losses. But well, hold on. The one thing I said, though, when we had the, the conversation in here was the Yankees don't sell. The Yankees are going to attack right. and buy, and that's what they did, and they are now making it their season. The only time they sold was like three or four years ago when Gary Sanchez first came but up and he was the story and they sold so they, they could sold set, with a they, plan so, though. So they could set them up them, themselves so the next year and bring Chapman back. Uh, you know, the, the one thing I, I was thinking about in, in regards to the Yankees and everything, they never sell. They're the Yankees. They are a top brand in all of sports and all of the world. They are a global top sports brand. Top five global sports brand. They spend a lot of money on their players. It costs a lot of money to go to their games. They're they're just not going to sell, and everybody says, "Oh, well, everything changed when Gallo and Rizzo came here." When you think about what Gallo and Rizzo have done since they've been here, I would tell you, eh, I don't know, because it's really Stanton, it's really Velasquez, it's Luke Voigt, it's the pitching staff, 
And I don't know if uh, those two guys brought out the best in what was here already, but a lot of the guys that have been in the mix here now making all of this happen are everybody other well, than Well, it's a combination Rizzo of everything, though. Yeah, but, 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 but I'm saying, like, like, you put uh, Stanton out in left field, that was great. But they've had their moments. I mean, Gallo won a game for them last week in which they might not have otherwise have. Rizzo was really good. When Rizzo, before he had the COVID, yeah. he was outstanding but for when, them. But when he got the COVID. And then Luke Voigt took Voigt over. And came back. Voigt was even better. And Voigt was angry. And yeah. he is he's back. It up. He's the player and, of the week last and, week. And you want to know something good for Luke Voigt? Because that's how you want your guys responding. And he knows. He's playing for a huge contract. He wants a big contract, and now is the moment for him to defend himself and defend his honor and his pride and go out there and play. That's why I love the fact that now, internally, you have internal competition for the team that is making the team better, and it's like the perfect scenario. Nobody is going to bitch and complain. The fact that Luke Voigt came out as aggressively as he did, I was a little shocked at that. He was, I, Me too. I, I was but like, he's wow. backed it up. But I, I, I love the fact that he's backed it up, and I'm, I love the fact that he has the pride and, and he's – and he's trying to make a name for himself. So good so, hey, good for him because that's what you want. And good for Brian Cashman because that trade for Rizzo definitely ignited Voight. I don't care what anybody says. It just totally ignited him. And that's good news uh, for Yankee fans. And one other thing with Gallo, the, he's a tremendous defensive player. Yes, he is. So it's been more than just one because he strikes out a ton, but it's been more than that. He's really helped them in the outfield. All of a sudden, you don't need Brett Gardner out there every day. Mm-hmm. Gardner can be now what he what was meant to be. be. Basically, he'll be a spot starter and a defensive replacement. And, maybe and that's a what you want. Late in games for right, somebody, for sure. Right, and that and that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. And and Brett's been great. He's been a great teammate. He's a great Yankee, and all that other stuff. We understand that. But you know, now until Aaron Judge can play center field, I yes, don't he know can. I said, yes, he can. That guy's a freak of. He an may athlete. not be Ken Griffey Jr., but no. he's going to play a very solid hey, center field. I give him, you know. So if Ken Gr- Griffey Jr. was an A plus plus center fielder, you know. To me, Aaron Judge is at least a B plus, if not an A minus. He's a very and, and he's, he's a great he's athlete, solid for sure. And it just goes to show you the versatility. And you want to see that? Like I, I never under, I can understand like a Cecil Fielder, maybe a Prince Fielder, even late in his career. Uh, you know, you know, a guy that gets really fat and all he wants to do is hit. I get that. As a DH. Yeah. that's all. I understand fat guys that want to hit. I don't understand <laughs> athletes like Stanton that want to sit their ass on the bench and don't go out there and play. Well, hopefully that's the end of that until uh, he's uh, later in his career now because he's done a very good job. Until he gets hurt again. That's the thing. We're gonna- Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.